it's about relationships. It's about group affiliation. It's about sense of belongingness. And one way I do talk about um, some of the issues that relate to bullying is that when we have these kids, like the kids who come to assist the bullies, that are like not necessarily the instigators, but are very readily available there, um, for some of these kids, as well as for bullies, there are some unmet social needs. And we need to understand what those un unmet social needs are and how to facilitate um, them feeling that they are valued members of the community, where they can have sense of control um, in ways other than abusing their power to put down others. A beautiful question. So which way does it go? So is bullying a way to gain status? Or is it that high status kids, the cool kids, are simply engaging in bullying? I have that slide. <laughs> so in the end, I have to cut some slides. I have that slide. And I thought, eh, I can talk about it if it comes up. Thank you for bringing it up. So indeed, what we've done in our longitudinal research is we have now three time points where we go and look at these, what are called cross lag panels. Which way do the arrows go? And when we, um, there's no question during transition years, it predominantly goes, bullying is a way to gain status. It goes in that direction only. When we examine that during non-transition years, it goes both ways works both ways. That is, kids can improve their social status uh, by engaging in bullying, but those who are high in status, keep continu they continue to bully one another because they need to worry about maintaining their position. Beautiful question. Yeah. And then, yeah. How do the bullies view their own actions? Do they, just like the bystanders, um, understand that it's immoral? I can't think of a good study um, where we would have been, I can't think of a good study that I, where would, I would have a clear answer. Um, in all likelihood, the skillful bullies would say, yes, that's wrong, because when they, when they are asked to make the judgment, they, they in part think about if they were the victims. Good question. That, this can be our last question. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, we have so okay. more, yes. so sorry. Yes. So does parenting matter? <laughs> yes, yes. So could we, based on um, parenting behavior, be able to predict who ends up uh, being the bully, um, acting like a bully, who is the victim, and who's the bystander? No. Do we know that there are some home characteristics and some parenting characteristics that predict kids being um, acting like bullies and or becoming like victims, yes. Harsh discipline, abusive home environment. But, but they seem to be predicting kids being involved in bullying, not necessarily being able to always predict whether the kid takes the role of the victim or the role of the bully. Mm -hmm. But there's an association. So again, I'm, I'm so glad you all came, and I want to thank Dr. Yuvenin. We have a little present.